Hey everybody, welcome to Creative Adventure Tables. I'm Todd Michael Putnam, and I'm here with my guest and good friend, Nick Gomez. Hello. Bro. And today, instead of talking about adventure tables, we're gonna talk about how we bring our adventure tables to life using paint. And WizKids sent me a couple of different box sets. They're new and they're beginner sets of their prismatic paints. And I actually haven't been painting for a couple years. I painted the first six or 700 of my own minis and then my eyes basically got shot, and so uh, I found somebody who's a professional who does it. And anyway, even in my best day, I have never been able to paint as well as this gentleman over here. So it was uh, probably best for me that it worked out that way. So when WizKids sent me these, uh, I immediately contacted Nick and asked him if he'd be willing to paint some stuff. And he said, sure, what did you want to paint? So I asked WizKids what they wanted us to paint, and they sent me an unpainted Tarasque, and they sent me an unpainted... Uh, um, Falling Star Ship, which are two very big bottles, and they also have some other smaller stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and check those out and see what Nick was able to do with the paints and what your opinion was of them, good, bad, or indifferent, things you like, things you didn't like, whatever it is, we're putting it all on the board so people can make an honest decision for themselves if these are the kind of pay sense they want. Before we get into the models, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, how long you've been into painting, and, and what's got you into it? Yeah, so uh, my name is Nick. Uh, I've known Todd now for over three and a half years. Uh, I have been painting for quite a long time. I actually started in college. Uh, I started collecting uh, games workshop miniatures, and I thought I would never, ever enjoy the painting aspect of tabletop miniatures, but I came to find out um, after just doing it enough times and it just keep practicing and doing more. I enjoy it. I love painting. I actually enjoy now painting more than I even enjoy uh, playing any of the tabletop games, but I still do play. Um, it's uh, That's good for me because I get a lot of paint. <laughs> yes, uh, a lot of interesting stuff that uh, I would never normally ever even think about painting, uh, like weird monsters and creatures that I have no basis of any type of reference to paint off of, and I have to just shoot in the dark and hope it works. And it always has so far. <laughs> yes. Um, so. I've been painting a lot of the different things that Todd has done. Uh, I can actually just jump right into the sure. paint kits. So uh, I want to start with the, because there's a lot of good, I'm going to start with some of the more nitpicky kind of stuff. Um, one of the biggest things is, I don't know if you ever pick these up, if you're going to run into it, but when I immediately got these and opened them up, I discovered something interesting. So when you see the case as such, and you open it, you expect it to open like this. Well, our sets were backward, and all the paints dumped out onto the lid. I don't know if that's going to be something that's standard. I don't know if it was just because we were given these and they were promised. I don't know, but it was awkward to have to then immediately reorganize and put all the paints back into the set. Um, just a little nitpicking, but other than that, uh, I really do enjoy these. Um, if you notice right off the bat, these are smaller bottles than any of the other kind of paints that you normally get. Um, Vallejo paints, P3 paints, uh, Citadel paints, there are a lot bigger bottles, and also with that comes bigger costs. Um, on average, uh, the pricing gets pretty high on bottle paints, and that has always been a detractor for a lot of people to paint their motto, is that you have to buy quite a few, and it gets really expensive fast. Uh, for a single miniature, you're talking about five, six, seven other different colors that are going to go on that model, and you have to buy a big bottle to go for a little, little miniature. What I think WizKids has done here is just fantastic. This is absolutely sets that are designed for the person of uh, intermediate skill or beginner skill. Um, what's great about them is they're, they're made by uh, Vallejo, so if anyone's used or practiced or done anything with Vallejo paints, they know what you're, you're getting. Uh, the pigments are very strong. Uh, they're easy, accessible to paint with. Uh, the bottles are always clean and kept nice. Uh, it's really great. On top of that, in the set, you also get a brush. Uh, I will tell you that it was one of the biggest surprises out of the box of how great the quality of the brushes are. Um, there are also other additional sets that uh, Whiskers has come out with the painting sets. Uh, there's uh, additional tools. All the brushes have been fantastic. I've gotten to use all of them. I love them. They've become actually some of my favorite brushes I've used so far. Uh, they've kept their, their tips real fine and sharp. Um, uh, along with it is, like I said, the size of the bottle. Um, you can buy these individual, you don't have to just get the kits. Uh, they go really cheap. Uh, MSRP right now in the United States is about $4. That's about half the price of Vallejo, Citadel, all the other, other painters. So um, you, you get a lot for a little, 
but they're almost designed specifically for the D and D kind of size models. Uh, like one little bottle is all you're going to need of the silver or the gold or the yellows. You don't need a lot when you're painting a little model. It's going to be more of just time and coverage and things like that. Now, when we go into what I was given of the task of doing uh, with like a terrace or a ship, you're going to use a lot of paint to cover these bottles. So just know that you're going to need more than a few of the bottles of this size to paint a terrace. As you can see, it's big. There's a lot of coverage to it. Um, before we get into that real quick, yeah. I just wanted to mm -hmm. ask, so the, the different types of colors that they gave you for yes. the basic and the intermediate, do you feel like that was, a, for lack of a better term, enough of a rainbow of colors that you could, uh, you could appropriately in any given yes. situation mm -hmm. Find the right color set to be able to match the tone that you are going for. And Correct. Going. So as they're labeled, you have the intermediate and the beginner set. Mm -hmm. So uh, the basic starter case gives you all your standard colors that you would want or think of. You have your blues, your yellows, your browns. Uh, you get a lot of stuff that you're going to need right off the bat. And that should do it for a lot of people. The intermediate case gives you a lot of cool stuff that will just bring a lot of vibrant uh, vibrant stuff. So. Um, one of the cool things that I, I, you get in the intermediate case is a metal medium. Mediums are specialty, not paints, but technical uses to thin, mix, add to the paints to give you cool effects. So if you wanted to use, let's say, a blue metallic look, well, if you wanted to get it normally, you would have to do some different steps to actually get a blue metallic. Well, with a metallic medium, you can literally take your blue and take the metallic medium, add a little bit together, and you now all of a sudden have a metallic blue. Very, very cool thing that they actually add that into a set. Almost always you're going to have to go off the beaten path to find things like that. And they include that into this set. So okay. it's sort of like they did the prep work for you. Correct. Okay. I can tell you that between the two sets, if you were to buy both, which is not a bad investment, this will be your paints. You will have everything you need to paint every miniature to every scale that you want. Uh, that's also one of the things I tried to achieve when I was painting these two models is you can hit the whole full gambit with just this. Um, if there's any specialty colors, like anything, you might have to mix and match. Uh, one of the interesting things I discovered is the uh, lack of brown. Brown is a pretty important color in painting because there are so many shades. You have dark brown, light brown. Uh, there's a lot. Uh, when you have leathers, you have different things and jerkins on the characters. Brown is very bright. Uh, very. There's not very many options. So you have a dark brown and a light brown, and that is your 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 color choices that you have in these two kits. So you're gonna have to like mix, match, add some colors. But that is not the end of the world. It can do a lot with just a little bit, as you can see of what I was able to do with just these colors. And well, we'll be able to see that with one of the ships that you painted too, the brown that you came up with. So you, it's more than actually a couple of different uh, shades of the brown that you came up with. So you can do it, but you just have to do a little experimenting with the colors that you have in order to shade it out. Correct. Okay. And you get enough paint to experiment and color. Mm -hmm. And out of the dropper bottles, it is the easiest way to do that. Uh, you can easily distribute your paint as necessary because they're mm -hmm. drops. Uh, going more into this, what you get, um, you get your basic colors as you would expect. There are also some very, very great metallics in here. Uh, the bright bronze, uh, the gold, the different shades of gold are fantastic. I can tell you right off uh, the beginning is the silver that comes in the box is probably one of the best silvers I've ever seen. Uh, it gives that real good effect if you want that awesome looking sword that's been sharpened and ready for battle. It really achieves that effect well. Um, it's also one of those things where you get your other technicals. So um, one of my big surprises is to see a dried blood. So that's not your typical normal paint. It's actually a technical color. Um, it's very, very watery and it, it, it pours into the cracks and areas of the model or recesses. But if you want to give that, looks like someone's been bleeding or lying on the ground, it gets that effect. So that's also included in these sets. Um, you also get things like um, colors that you really, really want to find in the D&D universe. So for instance, the terrace has a very distinctive kind of orange-brown look. Well, thankfully, they actually give you a terrace carcass color. So it's really great. Now, again, if you're going to paint a terrace, it's, it's going to take you several of those bottles, but it's become very accessible. A lot of your freelance game stores that are out there carry a lot of D&D stuff, and a lot of these paints are going to be carried in a lot of stores. Uh, every store in this area that I know has these sets available, and also have them for individual purchases as well. Accessibility to paints is huge. It is very uh, 
annoying to a person like me who does a lot of painting to have to drive all the way across town or even across state or do a bunch of orders on the internet to get the very specific colors from the brand that I need. Um, when you run out of paint and you need to have that matched color paint, you have to do that. There is no real fix to it other than get the same brand. But they, these are become very accessible. Uh, everyone is carrying them. Everyone is getting access to it. So um, you don't necessarily have to buy the whole set. I just think that out of the out of the purchase you get, you're done. You get two great brushes. You get two great uh, abilities to do whatever color that comes to your mind, whether it's undead, mummies. Uh, your your creation is. And if, and if you're going to do something big, you're going to you do some tests on it, and then you're going to know exactly what you need more of, because obviously it's written right there in the bottle. So you go to the same hobby shop that you got them from, and or you go back online if you need to order them. But uh, and it's just snap, there it is. It's easy to get though. So. Speaking of the Tarasque, shall we take a look at it and see what you did with it? Yes, absolutely. This was an unpainted model that WizKids sent us to check it out. And we're going to show you some more close-ups of it later, but we're just going to talk about it right now. Um, this is, well, here's a 28 millimeter mini for scale, just to, just to show you the size of this, this uh, quote-unquote mini, um, that, that how big that actually is. Uh, this is a, a regular-sized human type. Actually, it's a Khajiit-type kind of guy from Skyrim, I believe. But... Um, that's that's the scale that you got on this thing for the size of this model and this was what all just a, a base white now, the the model itself comes pre pre primed if i remember correctly right. it's pre primed okay and i wanted to just test that pre primed out I, i've never done uh, a model without priming it myself the the paint hit adheres to it really pretty well so it did a great job of it um it is a bees of a model as you can tell it's big thankfully though it's so porous, and one of the things that really gets a cool effect in, in here is the Umbridge, uh, I gotta look at the actual name of it, it's one of the washes that, that come in the set, uh, Umber, Umber Wash. Mm -hmm. It is a, like a, a brownish wash, and it is fantastic. It is, these washes that come in these sets are, are amazing. Um, they don't achieve kind of some of the same effect if you know painting, uh, it's, it has a different feel to it than your Citadel washes or some of the you know Army Painter washes. It definitely gives a little bit more of a darker tone to it, but sometimes that is what you want. You want it to dull down, you want to get into all the creases, and it, it achieved the effect perfectly. It did not take long to apply that wash to the entire cover here. You said this was actually a relatively easy model to paint. Yes, it sounds crazy, but it was relatively easy. As you can tell, it's mostly one color, uh, right. After I actually painted the orange, um, but this is just like a slightly darker red. Or it's not an actual red, but it's yep. got like a reddish mm. tinge to it. I can tell you all the colors I used. So I used the the terrace the terrace carapace for the orange, mm -hmm. and then I also used the uh, cobalt scales, and that is what you see for the uh, for, okay. the, for the back here of the carapace. Right. Um, I did mix. Uh, a couple of the different colors to achieve the, the tongue. The tongue. Okay. I used the scarlet red and a little bit, I believe, of the uh, like a, a blood red. Okay. Just give it that nice little pinkish tongue look. Right. But everything in here is straight from the sets. Okay. Um, after doing all the coverage, all you do is dry brush. Um, so after it darkens it down, you just take more of the terrace, the, the terrace, terrace carcass, and just dry brush it over there, which is a whole different technique in itself. But then you get this effect, it's really easy to do, it was done, um, it did not take long. For the model itself, if you actually are interested in it, looks ungainly, the tail itself is actually magnetic and it, it comes, comes off. off. It's a great model, That's, the model's also out of for kids. if you're going to store it or take it somewhere, yeah. it's actually not that bad, and the tail just goes right back on, and it, it magnetizes really well and it holds very well. well. Yeah, it does fantastic. The, the, the seam is, is very good. You don't even see that there's a seam in there for when that goes back on. So it, it came across fantastic. I know when you, I used this on the very, when he first brought it back on the very next campaign I uh, shot, I actually used this to rest. Uh, and that the video is online of them uh, crushing around and, uh, and destroying stuff of, uh, of the Tarasque and what a blast it was to have this thing. But I gotta say too, and you also use some kind of a yellow for the eyes. Uh, yes, I, I did use yeah, I used the uh, the golden yellow mm -hmm. to get to the eyes in there, right? And that's it, real mm -hmm. simple. And the, and the black for the for the nails and stuff. Yep, that was the actual black that comes in the yep. set. Simple. So just just with those couple sets, you were able to complete this this model. I think you had to buy a couple extra for the Taurus paint, obviously. Correct. Uh, yeah. I only had to get one extra bottle. Okay. Uh, I think I had to maybe get two of the uh, the wash because wash does come sure. real quick. 
Okay. But again, at the low cost of it, right. it's way cheaper right. than having to do anything else. And, and if if two bottles handles all of this, how many of these are you going to be able to paint? Because obviously it's not all going to be one color. So right. you could get countless minis out of out of each one of these sets for the normal size stuff. This is very much an oversized mini. We're going to go ahead and put this poor guy in the in the Teresque's jaws. Uh, there you go. He fits in there quite nicely. <laughs> so uh, so clearly you can see that the the, the, the amount of paint that you get for what you'd normally in most cases be painting for these regular size minis, you're going to be able to do quite a lot with it. Um, and you, you used only the, the brushes that came with it to paint the whole thing for the Correct. dry brush and yep. everything. Absolutely. Okay. Um, now, when you see a model like this, if you're new to painting and you want to invest and do something cool like this, don't be intimidated. When it's, uh, I mean, I almost kind of use a Bob Ross kind of thinking of, it's a living creature. There are no accidents. You can always put lore and feeling and different stories about why it looks the way it does. That's a good idea. So, I mean, it you can't do a big mistake mm -hmm. if you just use the colors and the paints as intended. It's going to look like this. You don't have to have years of skill like I've done to achieve this quality. You really don't. You don't have to be intimidated by it. Um, it's just go with it and practice. And with the accessibility that paints have ever become, it's okay. You can always paint over something. Um, it's not hard. And with these, with these kinds of paints, they're very forgiving. Vallejo has always been known of being a very forgiving kind of paint. A lot of people won't agree with me on that, but that's okay. I do enough. So um, why it's so forgiving is one of the biggest mistakes people do with painting is that they use too much paint. They don't thin it down, and it globs up the mini, and it loses a lot of the detail. The little paints are very thin and watered down. Uh, I will tell you, I went straight onto this. I went from the paint onto it. I didn't thin it down. I wanted to kind of paint this as if someone was just going at it. Um, and this is what you get. This is really good detail. It looks amazing. So, so this is what you did with the least amount of mixing that you could really do. Correct. You have to water the stuff down. Obviously, you had to wa you wash it afterwards. But with the least amount of actual technical detail, I'll call yep. it that, you were still able to come out with this model. Again, we're going to show you close up to this in just a little bit. I don't have a professional cameraman, so, but I'll, I'll take some video after that. So that's this guy. This was the Teresque who was successfully used to destroy, destroy a town within a week of you uh, dropping him off. So fantastic. thank you for that. Uh, the town people did not vote for it, but, but um, <laughs> it looked fantastic on the table. And uh, obviously my players just had an absolute blast when this thing came out and got put on the table. So cool on the Teresque and also very cool on the paints for uh, that got put up. Let's set this one aside and let's talk about the, uh, the ships as well. So I gave you a really odd one. This is... The Falling Star Sailing Ship, also from WizKids. This one was sent unpainted to, uh, to us so that we could nick it, paint it up. But I gave you a little bit of, of, of a, a curveball. And yes. I told them, I said, I want it to be painted sort of like Pirates of the Caribbean, and I want you to split the difference. It could be a regular pirate ship, or I could use it as an undead pirate ship. So I really kind of gave him a curveball on that. So now knowing and having painted for Todd for years now, uh, I understand what he's actually going for, and the secret message is I want to use it for both. Right. So that's exactly now, right. not only is it do one or the other, no, no, no it's actually both, and that's okay. Right. <laughs> that's, that's exactly. Right. <laughs> and there you go. So this is on the other end of the spectrum of having to do a lot with what you got. So as I was saying earlier, uh, there's not a whole wide scale of browns in there uh, because you're, it's you can tell the set is matter of going for like painting a mini and getting like your browns or your leathers and stuff like that. This is going for old wood, dead wood. So I'm really trying to stretch it. I did a lot of mixing, a lot of playing around. To tell you all the different mixes I had to use, it would take too long, but really it's, it's either you hold it. You start, and again, as I actually tell Todd a lot of the times when I paint my model, sometimes I have to stop and do it all over again. Yeah. And sometimes it means uh, using the isopropyl and, and stripping it down, or it just means I, it's too dark, let's go for a higher shade. So it's a lot of experimenting and playing around. Um, and I hate to say it, is you just got to use your eye. Uh, I, I like to think that I have a painter's eye for it. I know what I'm trying to achieve. I want to achieve the look of, this is a backup ship. Well, so, and, not, and I'm not near the painter that he's ever been, but to sort of relate it to what I do as far as building out the adventure tables, it's the same feeling where you look at it and you set it out there and you look at it, does that give me the feeling that I want to have when I look at it? And, for, and I assume that's what it is for you. You look at it and like, does that, does that convey the emotion to me? Correct. Basically that I'm looking for. And so even if you're not a, a, you know, a super skilled painter, you're still going to be able to know whether or not, yes, that looks close to what I, the feel that I'm going for, the vibe, or it's not. 
So that's just going to be a, a you know, it, it's just try and, and, and then come back and do something different. But what I want to do is give a little bit of a contrast because you don't know, this is also a falling star ship. We're going to go ahead and leave that one there, actually. Okay. And we're, this one is also the same ship, but it's been painted with different colors. And when I was, and this one is supposed to be just a traditional ship where, um, you know, I could put regular privateers on it or I could be a merchant ship or anything like that carrying cargo. Um, so this is much more of like a neutral ship, whereas this one, of course, is definitely supposed to be the bad guys. It's pirates, it's undead, so on and so forth. So this one, of course, has got the, the black or, or really dark brown railings that are going on. It's got the black sails that you did. Um, and you put barnacles and stuff all mm -hmm. on the side and the bottom of this one. So amazing job on that, which differentiates it from the same exact model just by the paint. Gives you a different vibe. Where here you went with like a like a darker sea green color. Mm -hmm. This one here has got like the brass tip for the dragon on the on the front of it, and this one is more of a darker color. And it's silver, and it's just been washed and mighted up and made look really grungy. Right, it's look real grungy and stuff, and it's got more of a, a you know, it's, it emphasizes the darker to it a lot more, and there's so there's a clear differentiation between the two. It's a totally different vibe, but what you said, you, you the, the one big challenge that you had, wasn't with the paints itself, was that, of course, these decks, which are, are, are essentially cardboard, we're not paintable, so the deck is going to be the same color. Correct. And so you can only go so far when you're yep. doing that. Which absolutely makes sense. But that being said, you can just take a look at this and see clearly with the with the green edge around here, and then having the clean lines on um, on this as opposed to being the having the barnacles put over here like you did on on the pirate ship, mm -hmm. um, makes all the difference in the world as far as what the ship is to be used for. If you put this ship out on the table for your players to look at, they're, they're going to think it might be a merchant vessel. It could be, you know, a cargo vessel or, or something like that, or it could be carrying even royalty or something Correct. like that. It's very, it's, it's very um, flexible in its purpose for that, and yet just by changing the paint colors and having a different color set on it, you have an entirely different vibe for the same exact model that you can do using this paint set mm -hmm. in order to create an entirely different feel. And, you're, and everything that you're doing on the table, in my perspective, is all about storytelling. It's all about setting the emotion and getting people immersed in this, the story into the buy-in, the believability. And so if the players are on this ship and they see this ship show up, in their brains, their emotions are already going just by seeing the colors. And those colors are the kind of things that you can create by adding to this paint set, which is what Nick did. So was there anything specific when you were painting this that you wanted to talk about as far as so if anyone was, done? So if anyone wants to ask, um, yes, painting the cells black was incredibly tricky. Um, you can't just take paint and put it onto fabric. Uh, it doesn't really work. Um, so what I actually used was the dark black wash that is in the set. I did buy a couple of them. I actually poured it into a bowl, added some water, and I literally painstakingly took the sails off of the mast, which I will tell you now if you attempt to do it, it's not fun. It, it takes a long time. Be very, very careful with it. Thanks. So you take them off and then you soak it. I actually wanted to achieve this really impossible middle ground in my own brain. Of, I didn't want pure black sails. I wanted the sails to look like they've been used. Right. Also remember I was also trying to hit this idea of maybe it's an undead ship. Maybe they weren't initially supposed to be black. Maybe they've just I've been exposed so long to the elements that they've turned mm -hmm. obviously a different color and you can easily see the contrast. Oh, absolutely. And I soak it and there you go, you have it. And then I had to put them back onto the mask. That was, yeah. Which is, again, a tricky. very tricky, long, painstaking process. Right. Interesting enough, just talking about the model, uh, it is all unpainted. It is completely pre-primed white. The only thing that has color are two things, the decks. Um, also in the set are additional decks, um, but they also have the sails. The sails, the, sails are here. the sails come with this color right here, So, and Nick, we, using the wash, was able to get them to this grungy, you know, dark brown or black. So the tricky color. is the masks themselves are also unpainted. So mm -hmm. you somehow have to decide, do you want to paint around the sails to paint the mask, or do what I did and take them off. Um, there is no right or wrong answer. It's whatever you want to do. Sure. Um, these are not cheap, so um, it is something that you, you want to make sure that you're not going to damage it. It took a lot of time to make sure I didn't damage the uh, sails and take them off. Um, it, it's one of the things you do when you paint and you do miniature you know, modeling. Is 
this person you got to risk it. Right. Some mm -hmm. projects are just going to be more involved than others. Like you said, that one was a super easy one. Quick. Just like the, yep. Just quick and easy. And then this one here is a lot more intricate and involved because of the sales. Yeah, it actually took a lot more time. Uh, also because I went for the full gusto. I also painted the inside of the ship uh, mm -hmm. just in case if it ever comes up. Um, the only thing that is not been done to this ship that is in the kit is I did use some uh, some basing texture to get the uh, the effect of the of the barnacles on the side. Okay, and that is also a lesson in itself. Is if you're painting, you don't just stick to just say I'm a Vallejo painter from you know Whiz Kids or I'm not just a. You use everything you have. Right. All the different things are there for you. Whatever tool is available to you that you can use to get the job done. And, and that's the same thing I have on my table. I use Monster Fight Club, I'll use WizKids, I'll use whoever it is that they've got the best tool for the job. Mm -hmm. um, but you also want to start with some kind of a starting base of what you might be. And in the case of paints or whatnot, if you're looking for an all-in-one thing, that's yep. the, 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 base, uh, the basic set and the, the intermediate set is a good starting place. Again, that look of how you get all of those details to point out, it is the washes if you're new to painting mm -hmm. Washes are what make you look like you're a genius painter. Um, the washes fill the creases, the, the crevices fills in. It gives you that shading. I'm gonna tell you is that I did the washes on the mask and let it be because sometimes you just mm -hmm. want to let it be. Right. Be also let it go. So <laughs> uh, you you can achieve this with just time. That's what really this model took mm -hmm. was just time, patience. It is annoying to have to take apart this entire thing. I did remove all the decking. Uh, the rails here actually come out. Um, I had to go through all that. It's just what you have to do. It all comes back together relatively well. It came back together fantastic. I can't wait to use it on the table. It's it's going to be amazing. My, my players haven't actually seen the pirate ship yet, uh, but they will because literally their next adventure. That's what they're doing is they're going to be going out uh, treasure hunting and stuff. So there's a high high percentage chance of pirates that could be showing up. <laughs> so perfect timing on on the, this vessel coming back because. Uh, it, it's going to be put to use uh, the very next time that we uh, that we gain. So oh, so we did one big project there. We did big ships here, and then you also did some minis real quick. Yep. Just to show for what you can do. I'm going to pop these over here. Of course, I'm going to take a lot closer look at these in just one moment. But just as a general idea for the different types of miniatures that you can kind of slide this over like this. Over here. There so, we go. discussing a little about these minis, these mm -hmm. come from the Skyrim game box set. Uh, it's again, kind of like a card arm. Yes. It, it goes back into it. You use whatever you have available to make right. your miniatures, and it's great. Uh, the, these are Skyrim themed. Mm -hmm. uh, all of these are used with the paints as well. And again, if you can actually see, the the paints are really fantastic when used for their intended purpose on like small little miniatures. Uh, the washes come up just well. And like I said, as you can see these swords, that is that silver that's in the set. It really gives that great edge shine to it. Um, yeah. Some of the other darker silvers is one of my actual new favorite paints that I've ever come across now. It is the, the gunmetal silver that is in the set. Um, it is that perfect dark steel that you want. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's no real definable way of saying it, but there's a lot of dark steel in fantasy and, and it's difficult to achieve it. And there's not a lot of good paints out there that, that really imitate it. This doesn't. This is yeah, the, pol like the, the, the polished silver there is perfect for like a magic sword or whatever it is, whereas yes. dark silver can be perfect for traditional weapons that have been, you know, powered and forged yes. and right, and that, that have been used in battle and whatnot. And again, all of that is storytelling. Uh, once you get these things painted the way that you want them painted, it, it, it tells part of the story for you without you having to use the words. Um, people don't think about this often when they're DMing, but when you've got minis on the table that are painted up in a way that are immersive to them, you don't have to give as long of a description because just, just a few brief words or whatever as you put the mini on there and they can take a look at it and they can see it, their brain fills in the rest. And what that means is if you as the dungeon master are talking less, it means the players are doing what they came to do, which is they're playing more. Because you're spending less time doing a soliloquy at the table and more time actually just, you give them the information they need and then they're off and running and getting to decide what to do. So as much as people don't think that painting is a, is a super important part of the actual role playing game, it's a huge time saver that could actually help you get through content faster and make the players feel like they were able to get a lot more accomplished because you as the dungeon master can spend less time. I don't have to describe the pirate ship, for example, in great detail because they can see it in front of them. And that two, three minutes that I save on not making that description is two, three, four minutes that they're more that they're getting to play 
because they're, they're chomping at the bits already once the moment that they see it. And if it was an unpainted ship, or it's, it's painted the same as every other one, it doesn't have that kind of an impact that it does when if you've got a professional type paint set, that you, or I should say at least a coordinated type paint set, that, uh, that can get that job done for you. So, did you have any other thoughts about the paint set? Like mm -hmm. a wrap up, as like a, as a, if you look at your, your color choice, the cost, um, the quality of the paints and the brushes, and then including the small snafus that you're talking about, like the packaging. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what kind of a rate, uh, out, of, out of five stars, where would you give it to, for a beginner person or an intermediate person to pick it up and give it a try? So there's always context to everything. Absolutely. So if you are a D&D player and you are wanting to start painting some of these miniatures mm -hmm. and you haven't started really collecting a big paint, uh, paint swap of different paints, this is for you. These paints are designed to be for a beginner who's starting. These sets get you full in. Um, you don't just start with half or just a little bit and then you gotta add paints as you go. You have all your paints ready to go. They're all in these very nice, coordinated, really well put down cases, so you don't have to have different paints and settings all over the place. Um, the paints themselves will do everything you want for your miniatures, everything that you can think of from the leathers, the spelts, the shoes, the furs, Everything that you want to paint, you can do it with these sets. Uh, the paints are not difficult to work with. Um, and as you can tell, with the D&D kind of branding, they're meant and designed to do these D&D miniatures. It's designed for it, it's meant for it, it's it, good for it. It takes all the guesswork out of it if you're trying multiple different companies or if you're online and you've never painted before and you're not sure. These are literally the paints that were designed to work with your D&D table if that's the gaming system that you're doing. Uh, for the monster manual and the colors that you see the, the creatures that are in there These are the paint colors that are really that you're going to need to, to bring those effect out Which are going to be the vast majority of the monsters most people are probably going to encounter in their career Correct. And uh, so that gives you a fantastic starting place to work with and that takes a whole lot of time and guesswork and pain out of Oh, I grabbed the wrong paint. This this isn't the right color and I'm not getting the effect that I need It's kind of that pre-selection work is done for you. So your ballpark idea on a, on a, out of five stars What would you give it an overall value? I would give it an overall value of five. Some of the, it's that good. There, there are certain paints that are in here that are literally some of the best paints I've ever gotten to use. Um, I, I'll tell you right now, coming across and discovering some of the silvers and stuff like that is invaluable because you, you can't test every paint in the world, so it's difficult to find the right one. Anyone who you talk to, if you have friends who are deep into painting, they all have their favorite brands, their favorite colors, their favorite go-to silvers and stuff like that. Um, and that's really just out of time and patience. So being able to get to use different ones and the paints you get in here are that of that scale and that quality, it's a, it's a good way. So um, I would take every single one of these paints and continue to use them and I will. I will absolutely use them for awesome years to come on these miniatures that, that I want to find that specific color for and they do well. Uh, the watches alone are all bang. I mean, they are amazing. I love every single one of them. They've become my go-to washes. They have, like I said, a different effect than like Citadel washes. Mm -hmm. Citadel washes have now become a lot more unintrusive. They don't uh, darken the miniature so much, which is a plus. But for some of these things that you're going for, for a very small miniature like this, it does it perfect. Uh, it fills those recesses for fur perfectly, perfectly. Um, one of the great things that comes out of this is Getting into painting has never been more accessible. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be a master painter anymore to do quality of this. Uh, don't let my time and, and my, my quality here distract you. I'm not kidding. The paints and the models make you look good. I tell that to Todd all the time is if he gives me good models, I can give him good models. He does say that. <laughs> <laughs> and I scour the internet for the weirdest shit I've ever. There are times. And he's looking at me like, who come to the door and he'll just shake his head, what the hell? Have you given me to paint that, right? Yeah, so. So it's great, and you know, sometimes it's a lot of guesswork, but what's cool is D&D doesn't give you a lot of guesswork. There's, there's so many resources out there that give you what you need to do and what to paint. So all you need now is just, just to fill in the colors. The D and D paints that you have here do exactly that. I can't. I don't want to go through every single named paint, but a lot of the names of the paints are literally exactly what they're designed for. You have magic blue. I wonder what that's meant for. Right. Yeah. They're intuitive. They're intuitive. Correct. Correct. So that's excellent, especially for a beginner. 
or somebody getting started, anything that you can take the guesswork out of, a, out of a, something that has so many variables to begin with, any creative endeavor is going to have a lot of variables on it, but they take a lot of the guesswork out just by naming them and by creating and, and choosing the paint colors that are most likely to be used for the monsters that you're most likely to be painting. So uh, fantastic for that. Nick? I thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. Really appreciate it. Uh, fantastic job on the models as you've always been doing. So uh, you. you're hired for next week again, as always. Um, like what, always. what all we got? Like another mountain of stuff still. There's still a lot of stuff. To okay. Here. So uh, so uh, you're so you're going to put a lot of this to work still continuing. Yeah, someone someone bought like two of the box sets at this time. Someone, so. someone did. I don't know who that would be, but uh, <laughs> but that guy's that guy's got a problem. I just want you to know. That guy's got a problem. You need help. He but needs it's okay. Help. That's true. And it's not covered by his insurance. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe to Creative Adventure Tables, uh, and also don't forget to uh, join us on our Facebook group, Creative Adventure Tables, uh, where thousands of other members just like you are checking out their, uh, their, their adventure table designs and sharing whether it's from beginning level tables with people that have low or no budget whatsoever to high end tier stuff that looks like it belongs at a convention. Everybody's sharing their ideas. It's a great, uh, it's a great resource for you and it costs you nothing to join. So thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to show you some, uh, some close-up video of these models in just a moment, and uh, I look forward to seeing you next adventure. Take care, guys. Bye.